Alright folks, I'm done with Ali Reza now, it's all about Gukesh D. No, I'm joking, I'm still going to cover a ton of Ali Reza Firuja games. I love his style, I think he's a future world champion, but this guy is really stealing the headlines right now at the Chess Olympiad. So Domaraju Gukesh, he's only 16 years old, and he's just won six straight games in a row at the Chess Olympiad. This has given him a tournament performance rating of 3,329. So can he continue this? Well, we'll find out tomorrow on the 5th of August. Today is the 4th of August, a rest day. So I want to take a look back at the game he played yesterday. He has the white pieces here. Let's see what happened. And by the way, the full details of the match are below, who he was playing, the teams, etc. So he kicks off with d4. Now we had d5, c4, e6, and we go down a standard queen's gambit declined here, and bishop b4 on the board, the ragazin variation, can get very, very sharp. So we had queen a4 check. There are a ton of moves there, as you can imagine. Bishop g5 gets very sharp. This one forces knight c6 to protect this bishop, and now we just had e3. Again, if you go bishop g5 after h6, you can't drop back here because of this stuff, and then knight e4 is strong. So you'd have to give up your bishop pair here. Game goes on. So that's why e3, blocking in the bishop, but stays very solid. Now we had castles, and bishop to d2 breaks this pin. And now it's not so easy for black to develop here if you don't know what you're doing. I mean, this bishop's trapped in, right? Going e5 isn't so easy right now. You can't go b6, or you lose the knight. So how are you unraveling? Well, black finds a nice way here, so takes on c4 immediately, does allow the bishop to capture in one, but now this bishop can drop back to d6. There's no c5 move kicking that bishop, and after queen c2 dropping back, you can go knight b5, by the way, but then you're losing a bit of time as white, and black should be able to get e5 soon. So just queen c2 played, its job there is done, forcing the knight to c6, and now e5 from black. So this is the whole purpose of the play. He takes on c4, dropping the bishop back. You get this quick break. We had an exchange here. Knight recaptures, hits this bishop, and now it drops back to e2. And after captures here with check, this is where Gukesh mixes up the position. Excuse me. So you can capture here with the bishop, and it's a bit of a dry position, you know, it's six on six with pawns, no one's got pawn weaknesses, it's fairly level. But when you do, where's my keyboard, when you do what Gukesh did and you capture with the pawn here, well now we have an imbalance. We've got an open G file to work with. A6 played by black, castles queenside, and this is the whole idea. Very aggressive setup but b5 in response. So you can see we've got an exciting game on our hands already here. So rook h to g1 was now played. It's giving this pawn, but you'd never want to take this one. You're just literally opening up lines of attack towards the king here in combination with the queen. Now you're pressuring the knight. If bishop f5, bishop c3, you know, just absolutely horrendous. So you'd never want to be snapping off that pawn. And here black actually makes a mistake. So b4 was played, improving the knight to e4, but actually bishop b7 was best. Now I'll show you why. Here we had b4, the knight comes to e4, we had a captures there, pawn recaptures, and queen e7, improving the queen, pressuring the pawn. And now if you imagine there was a bishop on b7, instead of the pawn being on b4, well now this would be attacked twice by queen and bishop, and f3 would be forced, basically, to defend that pawn. But without the bishop on b7, well, now white can go f4 in 1. Now we had a5, and now e5. So, you know, white's really getting a strong foothold in the centre there. So the bishop now comes in c5. We had rook g5. I mean, all simple moves now. The attack is playing itself. Bishop a6 played. And now here the rook just comes to the g file, ignoring this one. Of course, if you take that, we crash through and you're getting mated using the queen. So now we had g6 in this position here after the rook's double. And now bishop takes on a6, rook recaptures, and pawn f5. So the white attack is just steamrolling along now. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've had a cold recently. So it's steamrolling along, and you can't take here, of course, 
or the pawn captures here, opening the rook, you know, this is just absolutely devastating. So the bishop now drops back to a7 because it is attacked by the queen and if this defender of that bishop gets kicked away, say with f6, well then your bishop is loose. So the bishop drops back. And now can you see what Gukesh played here? You know, how would you continue the attack? There are different moves, but a really nice one that Gukesh finds is pawn to e6. And one to remember for your own games, really, it's just such a nice way to start breaking down pawn chains when you can get two points of tension like this. And black does not have a lot of good moves. I mean, say you take this one, well, then we take here, and you're kind of ripping things open around the king. Now, the computer finds this crazy line of going h6 to close things, and then it says g7 is the best move. You could have this kind of craziness here. Black's actually a pawn up but we can see that the white attack is pretty deadly. Queen g6 could come or pawn h4 to open more lines of attack. So we didn't have takes on e6, was possible, but looks scary. Instead, king h8 was played and now just king b1 from Gukesh, a safety first move. And again, asking black how they want to unravel. It's really not easy. And now black doesn't want to sit there, just let Gukesh slowly improve. Instead, they take on f5. Now, it looks really ugly to open the g-file for those rooks. And sure enough, Gukesh finds an exceptional move. But if you play this wrong, then black can start unraveling. So, for example, say you take here with the queen. Well, now you can take on e6 with the black queen and you're doing okay. You're starting to defend. Equally, if you say take with the pawn here, well, the queen recaptures. White's still a bit better. Not so clear. But after takes on f5 here, this is where Gukesh finds this exceptional shot. So if you want to pause and look for it, then please do so. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is where Gukesh plays bishop takes on b4, a fantastic clearance move. He's clearing the queen to come to g2. So the queen's obviously attacked, you know, you've picked up a pawn. You can take with the B pawn here, uh, the A pawn rather, and we get similar lines to the game. But the queen recaptured and now queen G2. And the whole idea is you're now triple stacked, threatening mate. Yes, black can go check and even get the queens off the board. But then there's still a massive problem after pawn to E7 hitting this rook because it gets kicked away. And now we check. This is the whole follow-up of the sequence. You're forcing this rook to capture, the king is boxed in, and now the pawn can't be stopped. It just marches through, makes a queen with check, and now you don't capture here as the best move. This is the power of the queen in such positions. You've got split pawns, an open king, and uncoordinated pieces. So what do we do? We start checking, and then pick up material. Now the rook blocked here, say you retreat the king by the way, well queen takes on c7 is just devastating. I mean you're threatening to check and pick up the rook. You're also threatening, say if the king moves, you're threatening queen b7, hitting both of these. You can't save them both. So the whole thing is just awful. So that's why rook f6 was played, blocks that check, gets one of these pieces out of the way of that traffic jam. And now queen g5 check, rook g6. The queen now took on a5, again picking up vital tempos against the bishop here. And again, there's big problems. I mean, say you take this one. Well, now there's queen c3 check, picking up the bishop. So we had a check instead here on g1. The king moved, rook g2 check, king b3. The bishop came here, but it kicks the queen, starts checking, king f8. Another check down here, the king moved. We snaffle yet another pawn hitting this one, threatening h4. Just beautiful geometry from the queen, the way it slides around the board. And now rook e2 was played. It is a blunder, but there really isn't a lot. I mean, you can go rook g6, let's say, but h4 is coming. One day the a pawn might roll, the problems persist. So we had rook to e2 here, hitting this pawn, threatening to take with check, supported by the bishop. But now we do this one. We check the king and now after queen to b4 check, black resigned because you're actually losing this rook by force. Say you do this one, well then we check here, pick up the rook and say you come to the g file, similar problems, we check from the g file, pick up the rook. So watch out for Gukesh. 
He's on his way to 2800, the way he's playing. If you want to see another amazing game by him, then click here. Thanks for watching. See you soon.